KGVO Missoula, KGVO FM, Frenchtown, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. Sports Talk tonight and streaming online at NewstalkKGVO.com. <laughs> hey, that's right. And the microphone was... No, 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 no coach. <laughs> No, no, it's a, it's a Wednesday night in the Garden City. I am sick, but I am here. I'm on the downhill slope of this damn thing. And, I hope uh, so. You know what? I, I keep telling people, I kind of sound like the male version of Demi Moore. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I get the looks, and, and some of the guys Indeed. that remember the movies from the back in the day are like, oh, yeah, you do, but I don't know if that makes me feel good either. Um, but anyways, this is Sports Talk Tonight with Gurdens and Medar. We are live from the KGVO studios. Remember, we are streaming worldwide on News Talk KGVO. Follow us on Twitter at Sports Talk Back. Our podcasts are online at News Talk KGVO.com. Dwayne Anderson, if you're listening, News Talk KGVO.com. Wanted to hear the uh, Loyola interview that we had uh, last weekend. Uh, very special guest tonight in the house, uh, head basketball coach for your Montana Grizzlies, Travis DeCure. Uh, welcome. Thanks How's it going? For, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I, uh, Excited to be here this evening. Right on. He's going to join us for, I don't know, for a little while. We're going to kind of talk and rehash the football game for a minute and uh, get to our first break quickly with some trivia, and then we'll get right That's back right. to, or right on with Coach. You, you, know, doing, you know the agenda and format like the back of your hand. Uh, well, I, I'm doing all right. You know, I always have to pout a couple days after a football loss. Yeah. And, uh, you know, start to lay there thinking, okay, why didn't we do this when we had the ball there? And then, okay, on that possession – you know, typical typical fan silliness. You know, in a in a nutshell, like Austin Powers would say, in a nutshell. Uh, you know, it came down to a couple plays. It, it came down to a couple turnovers. Uh, when you big, turn the ball over on your own twenty six and you're thirteen, you kind of put the defense uh, in a bad position. Um, and uh, and uh, Cal Poly converted. They threw a couple of long passes where we talked about that too. They sucked up the D, sucked up the D, and then they. They took it oh, deep, yeah. and you know, three or four plays, and and Montana's on the the winning end of that. But I tell you what, I hate the I hate the term a good loss. It drives me nuts. But uh, if there is such a thing, it's not a bad loss. Cal Poly is a very good team. I think so too. I think uh, they will be uh, right up near. It was like Coach Stitt said on his show yesterday. As long as they don't get banged up, you know, you you have a situation where okay, guys, uh, doesn't matter who you're playing the following Saturday. Don't have a Montana Grizzly hangover. Play play well and keep doing well. They they should be near oh, yeah. the, the top when all is said and done. Well, it was funny last year they they end up beating us and I think they last year they beat us and I think they went four and seven. Well, uh, yeah, they I think they got thumped pretty good by Northern Iowa the week after they played Montana. Maybe it was two weeks after, but yeah, yeah, they they kind of um, they they did not have a, a great season. No, and uh, and heck, by all by all. <laughs> By all uh, looks, it looks like they're going to have a pretty good year this yeah, year. Yeah, we wish them well. You know, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't mind seeing them near, uh, finishing second. That's that's where I wouldn't <laughs> mind seeing them finish. Tied for second with like four <laughs> other teams, and then and then we that'd can be, be fine too. We can yeah. be number one. That would uh, be fine too. The poor kitty cats end up taking a a loss to North Dakota, and, and we're trying to do our post game show. We we broadcast the Bobcat games as well, by the way, on our sister station KMPT AM nine thirty. You and I are, are trying to do our portion of the post game show about the same time that game is getting close to wrapping up. So I'm waiting for a commercial break, running across the hall. You're trying to check it online. Yeah, my phone's a little okay. behind. All right, it's 17 to 15. They just scored. Oh, they didn't get the two point conversion. Oh, they recovered the onside kick. Oh, they're gonna kick. It. Oh, they fumbled. It just it was a wacky last couple minutes of that ball game. Yeah, I, I love 17 15 the final. Love every team that plays those guys. Over I know there. they're they're well, your favorite team. You. Anybody playing the Bobcats, your favorite team. Well, you're. Your favorite team from uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota, pulled that one out. So yeah. congrats and, to them. And you know what? That is never going to change. Travis, do you like the Cats? I can't say what yeah, I would no, like to say, can. but we'll, we'll just we'll just you see. We'll go with a no. Not put a coach on the oh, spot. Oh like yes, that. you can. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, back in the day, we could wear shirts that said anything on them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember wearing one to graduation. Mm. It had a picture of a grizzly holding a cat by the neck. Mm-hmm. I, I've got a box of uh, we got a of visual shirts. Yes, I, I I break them out every once in a while. Yeah, it's uh, but anyways, <laughs> anyways, you I digress. digress. So, yeah, Southern Utah on Saturday, and there is no reason in the world Montana cannot be 
five and one when these first three Saturdays in October oh, have, have come and gone. You know, we talked about this too, Denny. Is that uh, if you would have told most people after three games in the season if Montana was going to be two and one, take it. I I bet you they would have been. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, tough Northern Iowa squad, mm-hmm. always a tough Cal Poly squad, and you didn't know what you're getting with St. Francis. Um, but uh, you know what? Everything's sitting sitting right there uh, in front of uh, the Montana sure. Grizzlies and Coach Ditton. And uh, yeah. it's going to be a crazy league. And looking at the, I, I can't believe we got to go to Eastern Washington and NAU on back to back weekends. Yeah, somebody, oh. somebody was, had a had a good time uh, putting that schedule together, didn't they? Yeah, you they know, did. Man, oh man, it was Fullerton's last yeah. little dig. That Personal former, foul. You former feel former target, targeting, Gerns. That's a fifteen. I was targeting. That commissioner's out of the game. Yeah, that's a that is a, a rough one. I'll tell you, but. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hopefully uh, Montana goes into it. Uh, let's see, that includes two conference games. So hopefully Montana goes into that at 5-1 at and one, at least 2-1 and one in conference play. So we shall see. Doesn't uh, Nobody's a walkover, but um, uh, especially the first opponent for homecoming. But, yeah, that's uh, that's where they should be. And it's one of those deals where you, you want to say congratulations to, to, to Brady and Jerry, and I'm sure they're, uh, well, yeah, thanks a lot, but. Right. You know, you, you, you want to uh, – Shatter. I mean, you want to shatter a record, or you talk about doing it. The receiving the single game reception record, boom. Oh yeah. But it was in a losing effort, and I'm sure he would just kind of say, "Well, yeah, I appreciate that, but you know, it's a team." And he did say, he says it's a team effort. I don't, I don't do that without all those other guys blocking for me and setting things up. Yeah, his but interview it was, was amazing. His interview was great. Gave credit to everybody else but himself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jerry Lou McGee, 21 catches, 155 yards, broke the Montana Grizzly record, tied the Big Sky. All-time conference record mm-hmm. for completion or for receptions in the game, and then Brady Gustafson with his 47 completions uh, breaks a, a Dave Dick- Dickinson record that uh, it's from 94, or 95, or something yeah. like that. So. so something that you observed in the post-game show, and I don't know how you get around it. It was it wasn't criticism as much as an input. Is that um, I, th- I think I think he had at least 13 or 14. Mm-hmm. He had a little over half the receptions in the first half, but he still caught a lot of balls in the second half. But very. Very few yards in in those receptions he, in the second half. He did, Denny. He had 13 grabs for 140 yards in the first half, and then in the second half, eight catches for 15. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it it's almost one of those deals where maybe they kind of got caught up in feeding him the ball um, because it didn't work in that second half. I mean, you're averaging just over or just under two yards a grab. That's not going to get you many places. So, you know. Great individual games. I thought it was a pretty good team effort uh, as well, Denny. Uh, just those couple turnovers. Time of possession was even. We talked about that. We had them in uh, in total yards as well. It was 485 to 431. Um, and just one of those things, going into a tougher place to play against a good opponent, uh, against kind of a funky offense, and, and things happen. Yeah, yeah. And you get um, – Maybe not the other end of the end of the spectrum, but you you get an opponent with a with an entirely different philosophy and strategy of play coming mm-hmm. in here on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So, so hey, you know what? Good uh, good game for the Mustangs at Cal Poly, uh, a good win for them, and a tough loss for Montana, but yeah. uh, definitely uh, one that they will, uh, I'm sure, bounce back from and uh, and uh, and get some things uh, get yeah. some things going. And, and even in a loss, you'd like to think, uh, boy, there there had to been some tremendous confidence builders, especially on the offensive side of the ball during that game. Uh, rushing game virtually non-existent in the first half, but they figured a few things out in the second half. And the passing game stayed very consistent in, in both halves. But like you say, you know, uh, uh, two huge, untimely, poor location turnovers <laughs> really had a, had a lot to do with that ball game. They did. We'll put that one to bed, uh, move on. Denny, and move on to, you know what, let's, let's give something away. All right. Wow. I left my phone over there. Oh. I don't know if we can do do that live on the average. You're going to hand me the uh, trivia phone. We need to take a picture of this phone because I believe it's a Toshiba from 1979 uh, yeah. push button. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's almond yeah. colored. Yeah, um, but even older, you know, Co- Coach DeCure was admiring our collection of cassette tapes up oh, yeah. on top of the equipment rack there. Oh, so yeah. I think we should play that for the crowd. <laughs> this, 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 this 20 years ago. <laughs> there's, there's not, well, oh, there is a tape deck right there. Oh, we yeah, can pop yeah, that in there. It doesn't oh, work boy. anymore, but we got one. <laughs> oh, Sports Talk Tonight trivia is brought to you by Fuddruckers and Happy Days Car Wash. Hey, Fuddruckers, world's greatest hamburgers. Whatever you order off that menu, you get to top it yourself. That makes it absolutely perfect. You just pile it on when you go over to those prep tables. And you can take Fud Ruckers with you. You know, you probably got a, 
a, a tailgate party planned this coming Saturday for homecoming. Well, they will supply you that Fuddruckers beef with a special seasoning in there. You just cook it up wherever you are. And, of course, they can get you all the, the buns and toppings you need, too. So ask about that at Fuddruckers on North Reserve. And from Brent and the crews at Happy Days Car Wash, either location, a gift card for the Works Car Wash at Happy Days, voted Missoulian's favorite in the latest reader's poll. Happy Days is on Brooks across from Dairy Queen, also on Brooks out by Fairbridge Inn and Suites. So if you know the answer, 721-1290, the number to call for Sports Talk Tonight Trivia, and we'll get you the $10 certificate to Fuddruckers and the Works gift card from Happy Days. Uh, it is homecoming Saturday for the University of Montana Grizzly football team hosting Southern Utah from Cedar City, Utah. Something else Cedar City is very well known for is A, Shakespeare, B, their Ford Thunderbird accessory manufacturing plant, or C, wind farms. 721-1290, something else Cedar City besides Southern Utah is well known for. A, Shakespeare, B, their Ford Thunderbird accessory manufacturing plant, or C, wind farms. Gerns, we need a winner at 721-1290. That is a varied uh, choice selection there you found, didn't Jay? Yes, sir. I, I made up two of them. You, I, tell I you might what, have made up three of them. I don't know. I, I, there's a board game that you can play <laughs> with that. It uh, involves drinking masses of amounts of alcohol, but uh, <clears throat> so I hear. Didn't, didn't know you needed a board game for that. Girl. Well, this is this is true. All, you know, all you need is a movie and a repetitive uh, deal. Anyway, Sports Talk Tonight, brought to you in part by Orange Street Food Farm, locally owned and operated grocery store, featuring the freshest fruits and vegetables, fresh meats, and a great beer and wine selection. And by Grizzly Liquor, located downtown next to the Iron Horse. Big Sky, big selection, and online at grizzlyliquor.com. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with trivia winner and head coach for the University of Montana basketball team, Travis DeCure, when we're right back on Sports Talk Tonight. And now time for another health tip from the Peak Health and Wellness. Now back to Missoula Sports Talk tonight on KGBO. Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. We're back. Sports Talk tonight brought to you in part by Bell McCall Ford. Great selection of new and used cars, trucks, and SUVs. Great deals on 2016 closeouts. Your locally owned low-cost auto dealer for over 100 years in downtown Hamilton, Montana. And by Granite Pharmacy, locally owned and operated pharmacy on the South Avenue between Shopco and Big Sky High School with their convenient drive through Denny, you're waiting with bated breath over I know. There. I was uh, going back and forth from the 1992 Toshiba phone or whatever you called it there. Jane Alford of Hamilton, Montana. How are you this evening, Jane? Pretty good. Thank you for uh, listening to Sports Talk tonight. Are you one of our regulars or just uh, kind of stumble upon us from time to time? Oh, no. Usually when I'm cooking dinner, I All listen. Right. All right, we'll take that. Well, homecoming Saturday for the Grizz football team. They host Southern Utah from Cedar City, Utah. Uh, something else Cedar City well-known for is A, Shakespeare, B, their Ford Thunderbird accessory manufacturing plant, or C, wind farms. What do you think there, Jane? Shakespeare. Since 1961, Cedar City has hosted the very popular Utah Shakespeare Festival. Eight shows every summer into fall. Uh, critically acclaimed and held on campus and I, I guess just a stunning Adams Memorial Theater. So, uh, yeah, Shakespeare. In fact, Jane Gerns, uh, Gerns will be doing his tribute to uh, Macbeth later in the show, so <laughs> you, you, you won't want to skip dessert till after 7, okay, Jane? Okay. Yeah, we appreciate you listening, and we'll get your uh, prize package mailed out to you, all right? Great. Thank you. Thank you for listening. That's Jane Alford, our latest winner there, Gerns. His nobler slings, arrows, outright misfortune, wow. something. I don't know. That's not bad. To be or not to be. That's, yeah. Something, <laughs> yeah. you know. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I've watched Leo DiCaprio. He's got oh, the fun. book sitting on his lap. Don't believe him. <laughs> and it's got good pictures <laughs> in it, too. I, and, and now it's Travis's turn. Oh. <laughs> Wow. I'm going home now. Yeah, we'll see you, man. <laughs> well, hey, we would... Uh, this is a kick. This, this is going to be thrilled. good. We would uh, like to welcome once again uh, to the Sports Talk uh, Tonight show, head coach uh, for the Montana Grizzly basketball team, Coach Travis DeCure. Welcome, man. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Awesome. Are you are you just about chomping at... Uh, how many bits have you gone through? Yeah. Because I know you're chomping. I've lost count, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, okay. I wish today were the first practice. Uh, these 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 forty minute deals are, are not long enough, and and it's they're testing my patience. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, let them test because yeah. you know we got to yeah. we got to follow the rules. I here. Imagine, long season. Yeah, I imagine there's always a few players that taste t- test your patience every year too when you're a head coach of uh, of any sporting no team. No question. Yeah. Well, hey, less than uh, less than a month before Gosh, uh, unbelievable. We tip off the uh, maroon uh, and silver scrimmage here in Missoula. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, you know, the guys, they, they were competing all summer, and, and then now uh, we took a little different approach this year to the fall uh, with, with more team-oriented drills. Uh, so it's been more competitive than, it, than it's ever been. And uh, one of the things that uh, Coach Flores and I were having lunch today talking about the team a little bit and the level of competition and how hard these guys are playing right now is incredible. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure to watch. I, w- I was going to say, you've, uh, I've, I've heard and I've, and I've seen a little bit, but uh... – you know, your starters coming back aren't guaranteed starters, are they? I mean, they're like you said, there's there's guys going to be pushing them all all fall. No, oh, and that's you need that uh, to be successful. You need that to be strong at the end. I, I think we ran out of gas the last two years uh, hmm. in that in that Big Sky Conference Championship game just because we're playing seven eight guys and it, it, thirty one games is a lot. Um, so now we can we can rest guys. Uh, we don't need to play guys injured, um, but at the same time, maybe we don't have to have anyone play 35, 36 minutes a game. Well, and before we talk about some of those new guys, speaking of, of new, it's, it's probably a, a bittersweet but very exciting situation for a head coach to be in. You have some uh, some new assistant coaching personnel as well, not just new players, but, but new coaches on board. Talk about them a little uh, bit. No question. It's a new chapter for us. Yeah. Um, even though it's only been two years, you, you, you move forward. Um, you gain strength with, with any change. Um, and, and I think that the biggest thing with change, you talk about competition on the court for the players, but same thing in the office is, is you restructure roles and things like that. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is, is to be surrounded with people that have known me for a long time and, and know me, know my personality, respond, um, to, to me very well. Um, but at the same time, uh, they, they can push me and compete with me at the same time, just because they, they know my buttons. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's not like it's not like we were getting rid of coaches because they weren't good coaches oh, or no, or no, anything like that. No, it was just no, not at it, all. I mean, it's that's just what happens in a change. No, you try to surround yourself with guys that are more on your wavelength, so to speak, and and it it happens all the time. Yeah, and needs change too over a period of time uh, as as you become more experienced, as your your che- your team changes. Um, you've had successes, you've had failures. Your needs change, and so. When having an opportunity to replace guys that move on to to other things, um, my selection process was a lot different than it was first time around. Are you uh, as a head coach? Are you a uh, are you a micromanager type of head coach? Or are you a uh, sp- spread it around a little bit? And um, you know, I'm kind of in between. I it, to be honest with you, I'm not a micromanager. I give out roles, um, and we meet every day, and so it's a t- it's a chance to update. It's a chance to move on to the next thing. Everybody's got a list of to dos as I do myself, and I just you know I listen as things are accomplished or not. And one of the things I think that was my strength that could be my weakness as a, as a head coach is that I just swallowed up things that weren't getting done. Hmm. And you can't do that as a head coach because you already have too many things on my plate as it is, and so it just adds to stress. Um, so now that I've restructured this, I've been hands off again and, and we'll just see what happens with things. But, um, it, it's, it's important for me to figure out guys and give them it, roles that are their strengths that fit their personality to allow them to be successful. You can't take a center and play them at the point, take a point, play them at the center. And it's the same thing with coaching positions. Um, and I think that I know the personalities of the guys that I brought in better on the, on the front end than working with someone for a year or two and getting to know their strengths mm-hmm. and weaknesses. So uh, I'm comfortable with where we're at. Um, but, you know, like I said, we, we had a good staff and, and we had a successful staff and I'll, I'll miss those guys. Yeah. And, and it sounds like one of their strengths is, and I'm sure you evaluate this too, it has to, it has to come into play is their skills as uh, recruiters. And yeah. it sounds like you got a, you got a pretty good crew in the, in that department. Yeah. We, you know, it's all about relationships at the end of the day, mm-hmm. and kids got to be comfortable with you. Parents got to be comfortable with you. You you have to evolve with recruiting because the game changes with rules and and social media and those types of things as kids change. But you know, for us also, you know, I look at the coaches that have been successful over the years. You know, you look at guys that you know, look at Michigan State, look at Duke, you look at places that have been consistent over and over again. Uh, I look at Mike Montgomery and Blaine Taylor, guys I worked for. They had guys on their staff that played for them and also had worked with them for a long period of time. So when I had this opportunity to restructure this with someone who's played for me, someone who's been around me for most of their life, I jumped on that opportunity. 
Sports Talk tonight with Gerns and Medard. We've got head basketball coach for the University of Montana Grizzlies, Travis DeCure, here in studio. And uh, before we talk about what's coming up, Trav, uh, how how do you replace um, how do you replace your big guy? <laughs> I mean, how, how do you do it? I think that's been the strength of the system, the strength of this blueprint. If you look at Stanford, you look at Montana over the years, you you, you look at Old Dominion different pieces become the strength of the team. And, you know, in, in six years we had three conference MVPs at Cal. We ran the same offense. We just ran the plays to a different guy. Hmm. And so for us, as you watch us play, it's going to look like we're running the same offense, just the emphasis to be different. So when a post sets a screen, it's probably to get that guy a shot, more so than before it was setting the screen to get an angle to throw it right back in there. Um, Maybe taking that offense one more one more step. Yep. Whoever. Yeah, and then now our spacing becomes a lot more important uh, as we try to attack from the outside in. But we'll play faster, speed the game up, try to get more high percentage shots, try to get more free throws by attacking off the bounce, uh, and and then we'll be more aggressive on the defensive end and try to force some turnovers. And if you can't replace ten offensive rebounds from one person, you can do it by committee with your guards. You also can force more turnovers and, and regain those extra possessions that way. Yeah, and Gerns is referring to uh, our lone senior from last year, Martin Breunig, who. Maybe it was a maybe it was a Tabor article as I read. I don't remember. As I understand, he's he's doing okay in in Germany, playing pro ball in Germany. Is that what Martin's up to? He's off to a good start. Um, he's he's got an incredible contract that you typically wouldn't see uh, for a rookie, um, and he's living up to it right now. He got off to a good. He's shooting the ball well. I look up and eleven for twelve from the floor, and I'm saying this is wow. Sam old Martin. Well, and he, <laughs> he's a he is a European style basketball player too. Yeah, and you know one of the things I've always you know as as scouts kind of called and asked about him was that I've never seen a kid with touch yeah. like he has around the basket and yeah, for him I, to I get couldn't. the play that he gets around the rim I think he can score the ball at any level um, the questions the other things and he'll have a chance to prove himself yeah and that, and that was one thing I, I agree with you 100 percent is that I, I couldn't remember a Montana Grizzly big man who did who just had these uh, delicate fingertip rolls and mm-hmm. And not necessarily even facing the basket when he started. I mean, he would he would pivot and get airborne, and then he'd get around to gently putting the ball in the hoop. But he just he just got a, he's got a wonderful repertoire of moves. No, you you talk to kids about shot selection, and they always say I can make that shot. And there's there's no shot that anyone can't make. I can make a half court shot. Right. Shoot shots you will make, and that's what Martin was really good at. Is he'd have a forty percent shot and turn it down, and pivot or step to a 75% shot. Exactly. And therefore, he shoots 69% for yeah. his career, I think, or something like that. Wow. Yeah, uh, a fun team to watch. You put together a very, very fun team to watch, and there's no reason to, to think otherwise this year. But what uh, what what do you see as uh, besides uh, the, the loss of Martin Broining, what, what are some of the, 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 the changes you anticipate seeing in Montana's style of play with the different personnel you're talking about? Uh, speed and athleticism. You, okay. you, you, the game's going to be quicker. Um you know, just the way guys react to the ball will be faster. Not necessarily my emphasis so much, but when the perimeter is your strength and you've got three or four guys on the floor that are faster than your opponent, you're, you're, the speed's going to be your strength. That's going to create opportunities for a lot of other guys that, that typically might not be go-to scorers. They're going to get layups, drop-offs, offensive rebounds just because the defense is reacting to the speed. And so we just got to – we've got to shoot the ball well. If we shoot the ball well, we'll keep the floor spread and – uh will make things happen. But you'll, you'll see some improved players. You'll see some guys that had limited roles last year that could have bigger roles for us this year. There'll be some new faces that have high expectations that you might find out that this thing isn't as easy as they thought it was when they got here, and they've got to earn their keep. But uh, the young fellas will step in, and they'll have some big games as well. Uh, talking with uh, Coach Travis Akir, head basketball coach, University of Montana. Who are some of these, uh, these new guys? Uh, Travis, let's talk about the transfers first. And then we'll get to the the freshmen that are redshirts. Who are uh, who are some of the guys that you're going to be leaning on here coming in the season? Well, the kid that sat out for us last year, Maud Rory, a young man that it, it, it's interesting. I was just commenting to someone a couple of days ago that I've known this kid since he was a sophomore in high school, 15 years old, and he just turned 21 a week week and a half ago, and I haven't coached him yet, and he's been committed to me for a long time, and then you know we end up going separate ways, and now he's back. So we're, we're both kind of chomping at the bit to, ha- to actually hit the floor together and, and, and make this thing happen. But there's a lot of excitement and expectations built around him based on what he did in practice last year um, and, and what he's capable of doing. 
the best thing I think for him is his IQ and feel for the game, though. Um, is he, you know, he can score the ball, he can shoot the ball, he can run the point, he can get you an offense, he can do a lot of things. But the the most important thing from a point guard is your feel for the game and your ability to understand that there's four other guys on the floor and and, and work to make them better. And I, I think he fits our style of play very perfectly. How crucial is that to? Uh, I mean, just looking down the roster, and honestly, I'm looking at Walter Wright, Michael Logini, Mario Dunn. Uh, this Ahmad Rory. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are all point guardish, mm-hmm. you know, and and they can score. Mm-hmm. How important is that to have that that kind of uh, diversity? Well, in the game? I, that's how you win. I, I we went to this in 2005 at Old Dominion. We we had a debate. We were playing guys at their position, and point guards are backing up point guards, and shooters are playing on the wing. And our two best perimeter players were point guards, and one of them was a prolific scorer and it just made sense to move him off the ball and it became the great debate for about maybe six weeks, uh, yeah. two weeks into into the season in terms of playing games. And we kind of went to that lineup early one game and, and we ended up playing well and a week later we beat Georgetown on the road and realized that that was the strength of our team. Since then, that's been my approach and, and, and Blaine played that way until he, he was done you know, at Old Dominion and we pushed that way at Cal. We won a championship with two point guards on the floor. Uh, I, I think handlers win. If you look at three of your last four national champions in college basketball, they played two point guards on the mm-hmm. floor. Villanova played two point guards. UConn was famous for two point guards on the floor. It, the more guys that can handle and create for others, the easier it is to execute offense. Uh, and it, it actually makes you better defensively. So in my opinion, um, a mod because he's built to score can play off the ball and and so it doesn't take anything away from him to play him at the two which allows walter to do what he does mike is in 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 such attack mode that you're better off playing him off and just letting him go and then having moments throughout the course of the game where he is actually at the point and is able to make some decisions but he, he's he's too good of a scorer to take that away from him, and he's still young. And so while he develops into that peer point position, we just let him go. And so with those three, they can exist together. Mario Dunn, uh, has, has, has most of his experience, his playing career is off the ball. So all these guys are versatile, mm-hmm. and, and, and I think that's the biggest thing. Walter was built to score. He has 23 points a game in junior college. So he'll have his moments where he'll play off the ball as well, and, and we'll turn him loose. How about uh, how about some of your bigger guys, uh, Coach? Like uh, Ako, did I say that right? Ako, yes, and uh, and Dorsey, um, and even Pridget and Anderson. They're 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 listed as some of them are listed as guards, but they're pretty. Don't I mean? Yeah. that's going to create a heck of a mismatch. Yeah, uh, with length. Well, Dorsey at six seven was recruited to play the wing in the Pac twelve. Uh, we recruited him a little bit at, at Cal, and uh, he ends up at Washington and. And because of style of play and opportunity, he had more opportunity at the four. And, and so he, he beefed up a little bit to play that position. And what we're going to do is, is is take some of that weight off of him and move him back to his natural position at the three. He's playing well right now. Uh, and his length, his ability to rebound, his range from three is going to make him a very tough cover in our conference, I think. And uh, Jamar is also a skilled big that carries a lot of girth that is is probably one of the better rebounders I've, I've been around. I mean, his timing, his ability to just go get the ball has been tremendous. Those two sitting out this year are going to make it very competitive as a scout squad for us to, to prepare every night. Um, and, and so I'm excited to see those guys compete every day. They're learning our system. Uh, and, and playing on the scout team sometimes allows you to kind of just do what you do because you're going to play to the strengths of the, your opponent. And, you know, there's less, there's less of me – picking apart their game and more letting them go a little bit. So they'll have a chance to build confidence and do what they do as, as they become uh, more efficient in how we play. Awesome. Well, hey, we'll, uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the freshmen uh, that were redshirted this year, the ones that are coming in, and we'll talk about a little bit of the schedule coming up. Uh, and we'll have a little bit more with the head coach, Travis Secure, the Montana Grizzlies. When we're b- I can't talk today, Denny. <laughs> when we come back on Sports Talk Tonight. <laughs> Sports Talk tonight, live from the KGBO studio. Missoula Sports. We are back. Sports Talk tonight, brought to you in part by Jerry Wessels Tire Center. Locally owned Les Schwab Tire Center provides the best tire value promise. Visit them online at jerrywesselstirecenter.com. 
and by CHS Mountain West Co-op Western Montana Source for Cynics Fuel Feed Fertilizer Clothing and Tack. For over 75 years, we have head coach Travis DeCure, University of Montana Grizz basketball team in the house with us today, and uh, we're just kind of talking about uh, returning players and, and and new players that nobody's uh, nobody's seen yet or, or, or heard about. Um, let me see. What's the story with Aaron uh, Miss a Peak Award? Uh, Aaron, uh, in-state kid that played in NWAC, uh, led the NWAC uh, Junior College League in, in Washington, led, led them in rebounding at 6'3". <laughs> um, knows how to play. You know, he's in all the right places. He, he probably is a guy that caught on to our defensive concept quicker than anyone else on our team. Uh, I, I think he's a guy that can earn some minutes for us uh, because he, what he does do is he doesn't make a lot of mistakes and he's in the right places and he plays within himself. Uh, and a couple of uh, familiar last names I see on your roster, uh, Trevor Spoya and Jared Samuelson. Now, Chris and Sean on the phones. Hey, coach, come on, you got to you got to get my kid. <laughs> what didn't take too much coaxing, did it? I changed my phone number. <laughs> no, the, uh, it's a family affair. Those are my guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, Samuelson's my first commit, you know, as a head coach here in Montana. Oh, okay. That was big for me. I, I really thought that he needed to be a part of our program. Uh, Spoya had some other opportunities, and I, I knew deep down inside he grew up a Grizz and wanted to be a Grizz, and, and so why not? You, you, if, you, don't, you know, if it doesn't work out, you could always go to those other places. But this is home, and so it's a pleasure to have both those guys in this program right now. Exactly, and then a couple of newcomers uh, to campus uh, this year, Saeed Pridget and Alfonso Anderson uh, from Oakland and Tacoma. We battled hard to get those kids here. Um, those are kids that were recruited at, at pretty much every level, um, could have played Pac-12, Mountain West basketball, and uh, that's when those relationships come in and, and just getting an understanding of what it is exactly those kids need and what they're looking for and what's best for them. And uh, we went to war for those guys. Saeed's a kid that, that right now uh, is we're figuring out what position, one, he can earn the most minutes, two, he can be more impactful as a freshman. I think down the road playing the point is, is in his future and could play some minutes there for us this year. Um, but he, he's an incredible player with feel. You know, he just he knows where open guys are. He, he's very unselfish. He, he creates well. He finishes at the basket. But his size as a guard is huge in his ability to rebound. Five. Yeah, and, and so uh, he'll he'll play anywhere from the one to the four maybe a little bit just to get him out there. But I think right now he, he's fitting in pretty well at the three for us. And uh, guys like him and Bobby Moorhead at 6'5", at 6'7", six, six, on the wing just, just creates length. So when people wonder how we're going to rebound and how we're going to play with posts that are 6'7", six, 6'8", six, well, we got wings that are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 so – over the over at, in, in the long run, you look at long arms, athleticism, uh, size on the perimeter. You can make up for your lack of girth in the middle. And then what about uh, Alfonso Anderson, coach? Alfonso's a skilled player that you know, good passer. Uh, I, I think his number one asset right now is rebounding the ball. Uh, and on the Nike circuit, EYBL, he rebounded with some of the biggest players in the country. I think he was top three in rebounding on that circuit, and that's an area that we really need him. Uh, I think he'll be really effective for us in the high post. Um, we, we run a lot of offense through our four men in the high post. I think he's a guy that passes the ball well and makes plays. Uh, and, he, and he's a young man that we hope could develop his perimeter game and, and, and be someone that can allow us to play very big later. I remember uh, in your in your first year as head coach, I think it was at one of our coaches' shows on a, on a Tuesday. It was kind of late in the season, and and I, I don't know if it was Mick or who you know brought up, uh, pointed out that all right, coach, man, you only you're only gonna have one senior next year, Martin Broyna. You got a young team. We've only got the one senior. It's gonna be great. And you said, yeah, but we got a lot of juniors, mm -hmm. and so you 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 concern yourself with that the year after, which is this year now. Mm -hmm. A lot of seniors on the team. Yeah. How do you feel? And, and it looks like you've you've got um, guys uh, that are that are in place that can probably step in after their senior year and take care of things. But I know that was a concern of yours. Yeah. Is that yeah, it's great to have only one senior. Uh, next year, but man, with with four or five juniors, I think you had at the time, uh, th that was an area of concern. Yeah, it's too many kids in one class. I don't. I, if you could avoid it, you know, you probably don't want more than four kids in a class. Uh, preferably starters, you know, two or three at the max, and that better right. be a really good year. Um, but but for me, I thought it was important to come in and recruit depth, and that's what we did. So now those seniors have competition for minutes. 
for starting jobs for roles. Right. And if we have good, honest competition with the youth, as those guys move on, we have experienced players coming up behind them that are really good and had and made a major impact on this year's season. And then you bring in two or three kids in next year's class that don't have to be uh, as impactful as maybe this group needs to be, but I think they still could be. Oh, and that's, uh, I tell you what, uh, it is going to be an up and down. And when I say up and down, I mean up and down the court. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Kind of a year, an athletic, uh, fun team to watch, I'm sure. No question. You know, at, at the end of the day, it's, we're still here to entertain. And we need to win games. Um, but, you know, we, we, we need to get some energy in that building. And we need to give people a reason to stand up and cheer. And an up-tempo game is the yeah. best way to do that. Yeah, I guess you're our first, uh, well, other than Shannon, of course, when she got the job. But you're our first basketball guy of the the season to talk, but well, we have talked to a, to a handful of football assistants and, and a few players and whatnot, and and every single one of them talks about just the 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 close knit group, how how close that 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 team and 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 coaching staff and and, and that whole the, the the whole football system revolves around just just how close they all are, and I, I kind of get the, the the sense that the basketball team's in the same place. No question, and and that part of that is recruiting. Uh, part of that is how I built the staff and. Everyone has known each other for a long time, and so we have a, a chemistry that, that uh, is unbreakable. And, and so when you look at the players, if you can recruit into three areas, two or three areas heavily, and get the bulk of your team from those areas, you're going to get kids that at least either played against each other or play with each other at some point in time. And you look at Donovan Dorsey and Ahmad Rory, you're going to have to go back five, six years to find it, but they did play together at a point in time. Uh, but all these kids are familiar with each other. And then we've got some kids sprinkled in from Southern California. So uh, as, as these guys know each other coming in, you know, Mario Dunn has known Saeed Bridget for a long time. Uh, there, there's a closeness that's, that's already there. It's, it's, it's not false. You don't well, have to and, and, it. and a mentor thing, I yeah. would think, too, Travis. No question. No question. And then, you know, we, we, we forced the issue a little bit, spend some time together. Uh, outside of the nice. gym and, and away from us. And if they do that, then they'll come together in right. all situations. And you got to do that because, you know, these kids, just like myself, just like you, we came from a little ways away. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you get homesick, you miss your family. I mean, you got to build that team yeah. quick yeah. or else, you know, you just sit there and you just get down in the dumps and then yeah. before you know it, you're gone. Well, you, you, you look at a lot of teams that are very talented that underachieve. Most of them, if you look at their roster, they, they probably have 10 kids from 10 different states or 10 different sure. cities at least. And it's just hard to bring kids from so many different backgrounds, so many different regions together. And you can't force it. And uh, it's, just, it's a lot easier when they've already known each other. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the schedule, Travis, while we have you for a few more minutes. Um, you know, the Big Sky Conference is a Big Sky Conference. It is what it is. It's always tough. Um See, we got Oregon on the dock at Wyoming, San Jose State, Pepperdine. We got a little payback. A mm -hmm. couple of those schools this year coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, Riverside, South Dakota, Mississippi, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, which is going to be a, a tough one. Uh, talk about the Par Paradise Jam. How in the heck are we playing in the Paradise? How does <laughs> how does something like that come about? You're not going, by the way. You've got a. You will have a football well, game. That, no, you have a football game to broadcast that. Week. If my wife tells me we're going, I'm going. Call oh, it sick. What am I supposed to do? I'll on the I'll pee you'll, your, phone, you'll phone pee in your claw in hand yeah, and I, yeah, hear the yeah. squeak hear of the sneakers, the gurgling of the straws that hits the empty. Yeah, right. How how do you how do you play in how do you get invited to play in one of those deals? Uh, we we so we're three years back to back tournaments right now. Um two of which are with the same company that put this tournament together. And we're also going on a foreign tour next year. So three out of four trips are with one company. Um, Nels Hawkinson, who, who, who runs Basketball Travelers, I've known for a long time. And when I was at Old Dominion, we went to that tournament once. And then when I left, they went again. Uh, Nels also did our foreign tour, and he ran a tournament that we ran at Old Dominion. So, And I've known Nels. He's from North Seattle. He's from Shoreline. So... You know, I've just known them for a long time. And so when we put when we first put our staff together and started working on our schedule, the first thing I wanted to do was the Paradise Jam because, one, it's a huge recruiting tool. Um, and, and, two, it's an opportunity to play against high-level talent um, above and beyond your, your natural West Coast schedule. Uh, so looking at that right now, there's an opportunity for us to play five high-major schools based on that schedule. Uh, well, we're guaranteed, really, because your you second round, you're going to play either Creighton, who's in the Big East, or Washington State, who's in the Pac-12. So 
with NC State on your opener. So for me, it was let, let's strengthen this thing as, as, as much as possible and let's recruit to it, and that's what we've done. Um, and so now Nails, we, we just contracted with him a couple months ago uh, to go on foreign tour. And then the following year in 2018, we're going to play in the Great Alaskan Shootout, which is a year that this group of seniors you're talking about, um, when you look at that, the, the sophomore class, which is big too, when those guys become seniors, we'll be in the Great Alaskan Shootout, and it's actually more of a mid-major tournament, which will give us an opportunity to try to make some kind of run and, and see that maybe we can go into conference with some better wins than what we have been. And I'm assuming that these tournaments are huge as far as recruiting goes. No huge. question. No question. Wow. No wow. question. Some pay and some don't. <clears throat> um, and some sometimes the fundraising part of it is huge too. Wow. I uh I can we can't let you go without uh, talking about this guy just a couple minutes does uh, you know is is there less um less uh, criticism of your coaching now that, that Robin Selvig has uh, moved from down the hall have you uh, uh you well, that means there's less like, help <laughs> <laughs> no, very, very tactful of course no, when he I, says, yeah coach uh, whatever in all honesty no, talk about Robin Selvig in all honesty I think the entire department's going to miss that guy oh yeah without a doubt I, I think that I've never seen anyone with with so much success remove their ego as much as he did from everything that he's done. And to be as selfless as he is, um, this university owes everything uh, to him. And, and so he needs to be celebrated in, in very special ways, and I know that that's going to happen. Sure. Uh, last year, the roast that we put on would not have been what it was if Robin Selvig weren't there. Um, and, and so I've already missed those conversations that we've had you know, him popping in my office or me popping in his. I miss his sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I miss his, his sense of humor is yeah. <clears throat> epic. Oh, it's yeah. great. No question. So yeah. uh, as as their program moves into a new chapter, and I know that it will be continued success with that, uh, you always will miss a legend. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, he's, he's the only uh, – and this is not a knock on how you guys do this because this is just how coaches do this, but – you know, I'm I'm at every game at least an hour before tip off. I'm prepping rosters and going over pronunciations and whatnot, and I, and I think he's the only head coach that 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 I've ever been involved with. Mo, most of you, you're you're still in the locker room until the very last minute. You're going over game. I, I don't know what you're doing in there. Mm-hmm. You're you're meditating. Pacing. Or you're pacing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But he's out there. You know, he'll go over and visit with the other team. He'll go sit in the stands and chitty chat. Uh, you know, he was always he was always one of the first guys out yeah. on the court, and that's just how he did that. You know, I mean, some some of it's personality. I, I think that when he's a CEO and he put a program together in short order that became a well oiled machine. He's got former players that understand. I'm looking at your shirt, the Montana way. They understand the Montana way, and. It was, it was easier for him to just be head coach and, and not worry about the things that assistants are doing. So he could his personality came out, and it's very difficult to yeah. do. Uh, and only people with as many wins as him get to that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think you nail it when you said it, that, but that was his personality. Yeah. I mean, you know, he just uh, – it wasn't that he didn't take the team seriously or his job seriously or anything like that. It was just I, – I guess that was his form of pacing. Mm-hmm. Is uh, that that was his that was his last minute game prep yeah. is to, to hang out and watch warm ups for for forty five minutes. So. No question. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, Coach, uh, can't thank, wait. Thank you so wait. much for joining us. Yeah, it's going to be an, an awesome year. Uh, the maroon and silver scrimmage going to kick off on October the twenty fifth at seven p.m. right here uh, in Missoula. Then a little Whitworth exhibition. Then down to a wow. California to uh, rough up some Trojans. Yeah, there's a lot of no names on that schedule, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, wow. Southern Cal, Cal Wyoming, yeah, we struggled Mi- to find comp. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Mississippi. Oh my yeah. god, Oregon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pepperdine. Yeah, I, I think the biggest one for us is that Wyoming home game, though, is our opener last year. Oregon. We had an incredible crowd for the Boise State game. Yeah, oh, an opportunity it? one to play Mountain West team, a, a former rival in conference. I think we got to look at Wyoming the same way, uh, a border competitor. Uh, and another opportunity to get someone that, that's playing in a bigger conference in our yeah. facility, and we need to show them how and, we do it. And probably a team that knocks on some of the same doors you do. So Yeah, no question. Mm-hmm. No question. Well, hey, it'll be here before you know it. Uh, you'll be all right. Just be patient. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'll and, try to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and we'll be out there watching as long with the rest of Grizz Nation. Uh, head coach, University of Montana, Grizzly basketball program, Travis DeCure. Thanks for joining us, man, and uh, good luck this year. Thanks for having me. Yeah, hope you can come back.
Awesome. Oh, Chris. Awesome. When we come back, we'll have Steel and Stupid, and uh, I'll try to not lose my voice before we're done. Hang Sports. on, Gerns. Only about 10 minutes left. Sports Talk tonight. Gerns and Medard. Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. Boy, what a what a treat. Uh, thank you to Eric Tabor for getting uh, Coach Travis to cure down Indeed. here uh, for that uh, interview. He is brought to you, as always, by First Montana Bank, your home for free centennial checking, plus unlimited cash back every time you use your debit card online at firstmontanabank.com. And uh, I tell you what, the guy does not look any different than when I went to school with him. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And I think I, he could play it yeah. still. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Young, young looking. He's got just that, that look in his eyes, you know, like, like, come on, man. Well, I tell you what, let's, man. Let's compete. He is, uh, he don't mess around. I oh, mean, no. You've, you've seen his style on the sidelines. I have. And it's, I have. Uh, he'd be a fun coach to play for, yeah. that's for sure. And a great interview. Maybe we're just easy to talk to, Gerns. I, I don't know. know. Everybody that comes tones. in here is, is a great interview. So maybe we're just so easy to talk to. Dulcet tones of I Denny don't know. I don't know. I do know it's time for the uh, Steel of the Week, brought to you by True North Steel. Have you picked out a uh, a, a fine steel for us this week, Gerns? I have. Um, and it was a college football game this week on Saturday uh, between uh, Stanford University, University, University of California, Los Angeles, otherwise known as UCLA. <laughs> uh, uh, UCLA has not beaten Stanford in eight years or eight, eight tries. Was it eight? I thought it was ten. Yeah, it was eight. Okay. Um, it's going to be nine here in a second. Uh, <laughs> Stanford trails the entire game. They're down nine to thirteen with two minutes and five seconds left, and uh, the trees go on a ten-play, seventy-one-yard uh, drive in one minute and forty-one seconds. JJ Arcega Whiteside catches an eight-yard pass from Ryan Burns to give Stanford the lead at sixteen to thirteen. And to add insult to injury, Solomon Torres returns a fumble set forty-two yards. On the last play of the game to ultimately give number seven Stanford the victory at twenty-two to thirteen. UCLA UCLA had the game in hand. Uh, they had bottled up McCaffrey, the you know the runner up to the Heisman last year, right. and uh, j- at the very end, uh, Stanford comes and steals the win. And you, but you, you know when you got a player like that, McCaffrey, you, you can't stop feeding him the ball. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, but I was kind of surprised at the the scoring, the overall scoring output of that game. It it it, it didn't it didn't have a look like. A low-scoring game for a lot of them. I mean, there were some, there were some big plays, some methodical parts of that game, but then just no points to show for it. You know, I, th- I think McCaffrey ran for like 130 something yards, but he only had two grabs for 13, which I thought they would have tried to get him the ball, you know, in a few different ways. But uh, yeah, Stanford uh, pulls out the victory, and that's why they're ranked number seven. Congrats to the Cardinal. That's your uh, true North Steel Steel of the week. Uh, you know, Danny, a couple of passings this past week in sports. Right. Um, Jose Fernandez. Uh, the flamethrower, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, uh, passes away in a boating accident. Uh, and Arnold Palmer, 87 years old, one of the first athletes to truly take advantage of marketing and and hawking wares. One of the one of the and even at his age, one of the top paid athletes right now in, in, in endorsements. That is so cool. Uh, Arnie's Arnie's uh, army. Uh, my grandpa and my uncle both met him, played golf with him, hmm. um, and uh, just I guess a real, real great guy, and uh, and he will be missed in the golf community. Yeah, and he, and he was just kind of he was every Duffer's golfer, you know, because <laughs> if you're looking for for classic swing fundamentals and and stuff like you don't necessarily look at Arnold Palmer videos, you know, you think, well, I swing like that. I mean, it's 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 like this. What what is that? Like a like a half arc or what? What's he doing there? But. But his 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 striking and and his accuracy and just just the, the 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 poise and the way he played the game, he was also on a Sports Center ESPN Sports Center television promo uh, a couple nights ago. They they resurrected. You know how they? Uh-huh. Oh uh, yeah. I think I think one that they're using right now a lot is Antonio Brown at the reception. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, they 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 resurrected one. Uh, I didn't. I I don't remember it when it was current, but. Um, it's it's Arnold Palmer and his and he's in a cafeteria and his caddy is carrying his clubs right behind him in the cafeteria and he's mixing what are the the two beverages he's mixing lemonade uh, lemonade and iced tea. iced tea to make to make his oh I drink Arnold. Arnold Arnold Palmer's a little bit different than that but uh. yeah but that was that was the Sports Center promo and they, uh. I thought it was so cool that they brought that out a 
Uh, and they might still be running it. I don't know, but I, I think we caught it during maybe the Monday night football broadcast. But they they brought that one out uh, in honor of Arnold. It was pretty good. Oh, uh, stupid athletes of the week, yes, Denny. Sir. Um, you know, there's a bunch of them. Uh, Austin Safari and Jenkins, uh, who 24 years old has the ability to be the best tight end in the National Football League. Uh, his second DUI, he gets released by the Buccaneers, um, picked up by the Jets. Hopefully he gets his stuff together. J.J. Watt um, hurts his back, Likes he, looks like he's out for the whole season, looks like he came back a little too fast. Um, you know, sometimes you might want to take a step back and not be stupid and, and get yourself totally healed. Uh, Greg Hardy was arrested at a club. They found cocaine in his wallet. He said it was somebody else's. Yeah, um, sure it was. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. LSU, uh, for firing less miles in the middle of the season. Um, LSU, they lost, what, three of their last four games last year. Should have fired them at the end of last season. They do it four games in now. And their thing was they're, they're gauging the interest of coaches Nick Saban and Urban Meyer. Uh, you know, And I'm like, that's almost the stupidest thing. Why would they even entertain? That, that is not going to happen at, no. the, at the point at their points and in their, their where they're at school wise in their careers. That ain't going to happen. No, no. not uh, going to happen. But the but the guy who gets it, and I don't I don't mean to sound callous, um, but my stupid athlete of the week, foolish athlete of the week, is Jose Fernandez. Uh, you know the guys the guys expecting a baby. Uh, he's on top of the world. Uh, we don't know the, all of the details of what happened, but. Uh, he gets in an argument with his girlfriend, and he goes out at 2 in the morning, leaving a bar, jumps in a boat in the dark and with a couple of his buddies and either doesn't know the area very well or, or something and runs into a jetty um, yeah. and, and just a foolish, um, you know, didn't. And kids these days, I'll call him a kid because he's 24, they just don't, they're so short-sighted. That they don't think about the consequences of what they're doing, and, and three people died, and, and and now he's gone. Yeah, so sad deal. Uh, we uh, Guernsey and I will be on the air at. Uh, Got to check my clock here, Guerns. Twelve thirty, twelve thirty Saturday afternoon for the statewide tailgate show. Then we'll kick it off two thirty. Roddy Corcoran and Greg Sunberg will bring you all the action of Montana Grizzly football, starting at two thirty here on uh, KGBO. And you you heard Travis DeCure mention the Montana Way, my shirt. Yeah. Uh, hey, the Montana Way. Dot com, the Montana Way on Facebook. Go check it out. They got some good stuff. And get uh, get your butts to Access Fitness. My <laughs> legs are killing me. <laughs> we will see you on the radio uh, Saturday, buddy. You bet, Denny, for a, uh, a victory against the Thunderbirds. Got it. Sports Talk tonight. Kearns and Bedard, we're out of here.